going on you guys this is Tim Odell with Odell Complete Concrete this is part two of a two-part series this is the poor day here's how the patio looked when we first got started or when we first got here on the job and if you want to see part one you just go to the videos and it's gonna be the last video we posted so you guys can check out part one if you haven't seen it hey what's going on you guys it's about 530 in the morning we just arrived on the site. We're gonna be pouring out today. Job's all set up. We got a nice two percent slope to the patio. We showed up a little early today just to make sure everything's set and ready to go, and we're not gonna have any surprises. This is how it looks when it's all said and done. All right, so the job was looking really nice, ready to pour out. I got my finisher with me, Evan, Sam, and Ernie, plus Leo, our concrete pumper. Shout out to Leo for always pumping the concrete. I mean, none of these jobs can be really done without him. Otherwise, I'd have a broken back from wheeling every job. And there's that form against the wall I kept talking about in the first part because the block wall foundation was so high we had to put a little form that tapers off to the very top of the concrete or top of the patio and as you can see as we pour out guys we're lifting that rebar up because we don't have any dobe set under that rebar so we are lifting that rebar as we go back and it may not seem like the rebar stays up in the concrete but the concrete is pretty dense and the rebar is not going to sink down to the bottom plus when we do rod back we try to step within the squares of the rebar so that we're not pushing the rebar back down and then I got Evan and Sam manning the rod and they did a great job on the rod I was just there for uh, you know close-ups with the GoPro helping pull up the rebar moving any concrete back with the shovel Here's some nice little close up action. You can see them working the rod, floating those edges. It was a little bit of a challenge pouring against this uh, railroad tie retaining wall because uh, we couldn't snap a line against the dirt since our concrete ended up being lower than the existing patio so that we can have a good. Uh, 2% slope we ended up uh, having to free rod it well besides a little stake that we put in in the middle to give us an idea when we did rod you'll see that in a bit I believe Evan uh, takes it out and then you see Sam getting the uh, uh, edge nice and float or floated in oh yeah there's that stake we snapped a line on that from the back patio to uh, half inch under the weep screen where he marked and you can see Evan's got some really nice uh, trowel work this is why I always like to bring him on our poor days I've noticed you know for his age and his experience is uh, exceptional I mean he's only 32 but with an experience of a six year old concrete finisher so his experience is uh, way beyond his years and he works concrete like my dad and yeah you can see he's using those old school wooden bowl floats and uh, he tells me that they're actually the best and after seeing him work that bowl float for the day I, I agree with him I mean he made this concrete so smooth and flat I really had to give him props the thing I noticed about this uh, wooden bowl float was uh, it really emphasized your low spots in your concrete. So anywhere there was any low spots, we could throw a, a shovel full of concrete into those low spots. Since uh, Leo, my concrete pumper, actually left us a little extra concrete, which he always does, which is always good. And what everyone should always do if you're pouring out concrete jobs. Because you can see right there, we're... Uh, we have low spots and that wooden bowl float is showing us we have low spots so we're putting a little bit of extra concrete in the areas where it needs it and we're gonna work the bowl float and work that concrete back into the patio slab 
making it nice flat and even overall and uh, I know I'm going to be coming back to do the second phase of this whole job which uh, the homeowner wants me to do the patio eventually and uh, I'll definitely be getting some shots for you guys later showing you how the patio came out when I do go back now here we are edging the whole uh, conquer slab and a uh, good thing to know guys when you guys are doing the edging is not to edge your concrete right away after you laid it down the main reason for that is because you don't want to be pushing your edge down any more than it needs to go down like when it's first setting settling or setting up and getting uh, more of a uh, hard getting just getting harder and more stiff I know we like both loaded the whole slab and then waited like 15 minutes before we even edged it once and I think the edging just comes out so much more nice that way a lot more clean at least it also depends on how fast your concrete is going off too of course then we come back and just all those lines on the side we're gonna float right back into the slab you always want to knock down your lines as soon as possible really because you don't want any line marks showing in the concrete or in the patio later on now we're just uh, funny floating the whole slab you know making it much easier nowadays now that they actually have those you know trowels on a stick and then here's a custom made joiner that Evan actually got made for him I didn't know it was self-made until he told me and I assumed that you know there was already these six foot joiners but he got this custom made at a, uh, a steel yard he's actually thinking about producing these so if you guys are interested and would actually want one of these let me know in the comment section guys because he wants to produce and make these and if people actually want them and will buy them he can produce them for you so let me know guys he can uh, I'm telling you guys it's worth it so definitely a cool neat item I mean we didn't even have to snap lines across uh, the patio because it was only 13 and a half feet and his you know like I was saying his joiner was six feet so it was already pretty much half the slab so we just had one guy stand behind him and tell him yeah that's straight <laughs> go forward <clears throat> so um, that was really nice having that nice six foot joiner and then we just ran our uh, uh, regular joiner to clean it up alright guys so we just joined all the major crack points on this job we went one on the corner of the house and then a couple off the forms around the AC unit and then we split the difference between the AC unit and the corner of the house. And now we just got done hitting it with the floats to knock out all the lines from the joints. Now we got Evan going down, cleaning up uh, the edges, finishing the bottom of the concrete a little bit. Coming out really beautiful. This pad is going to be really beautiful when it's all said and done. And this is how it's looking. So, all in all, the job's coming out really great. Couldn't be happier. I know the homeowner couldn't be happier. And, I mean, Evan's just a beast, man. He just killed the slab by himself. And then he was telling me how he had another, like, I think I got three or four hundred yard pour the next day so he was like hey man don't even worry about it i'll just get out on the slab and i'll kill it myself i'm like oh okay you handle it then man <laughs> i'll just be your backup i'll be hitting these edges so me and sam just went down the edge and just hit the edges for him while he just killed the whole slab so when i do come back to do the second phase of this job i'm definitely going to be bringing evan again i mean He's worth two guys at least. I barely even had to touch the concrete this day. So, 
when that second phase starts to happen, he's going to be getting a call. I did get on the slab a little bit, but just a little bit. Evan didn't want to get off the slab. He was having too much fun. And we did start brooming the edge of the patio where the sun was really beating on it. But the rest of the, the patio was just not drying too evenly since there was a, uh, you know, a patio cover. And then the block wall was covering some of the concrete. Plus it was super wet in that area when we did pour the concrete. So it was like a double whammy right there over in the shade where you can see right now on the uh, left side of the joint. That's where uh, it just wouldn't dry for us. So, you know, we stayed a little longer, hung out. And you can see us stripping that little tapered uh, curb right there to hide that ugly foundation work from the block wall. And that little curb actually came out really nice. Plus, it was nice for the homeowner too because it gave his kids a spot to actually write their names in. And so that's what they did. They wrote their names in on that little curb. So all in all, it worked out for everyone. And you can see it transition really nice and smoothly into the patio. And here we are finally brooming the rest of the, the patio where it was all shaded. I think we waited like literally maybe like an hour before we started hitting those shade areas and we still had to keep going back down on this uh, shaded area because it was just too wet. I think we waited two more hours before we broomed this area. Overall it was a pretty long day but it was worth it in the end to get the results we got for this patio. Couldn't be happier. And we busted out uh, Evan's broom because his was a softer broom to broom this a little earlier since um, it was so wet. Alright, what's going on guys? It's the end of the day. It's about 3 p.m. We're wrapping this job up. Uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the patio, it just would not dry for us, so we had to stay a little longer than expected. But it's okay. Um, we got the job done. We got about seven joints in here in total. We're gonna come back the next day actually and cut one straight across the whole patio, take the rest of these forms out. But overall, this shop came out beautifully. Couldn't be happier. Homeowner couldn't be happier. And uh, we're gonna be coming back for some more work, guys. So stay tuned for that. Check out the job.